Thanks, Reese Davis, and welcome to sunny Florida. We're going to have a nice evening for football. The temperature will be in the low 40s. Everybody asked the question, what about Charlie Whitehurst, the quarterback of Clemson? Orthroscopic surgery. As soon as the regular season was over, he has been absolutely fine. He has thrown every route he needs to throw. The coaches are encouraged. Another young man who is healthy is a running back with the name of Davis that they really depend on, Bob. Ron, Clemson has some great young players led by true freshman tailback. James Davis. He was named the ACC Newcomer of the Year, and he had 145 yards rushing in Clemson's last game against South Carolina. He has great speed, and the thing you love about James Davis, he has the potential to score every time he touches the football. And for the Colorado Buffaloes, Joel Klatt, the starting quarterback for virtually the entire season suffered a concussion in the Big 12 championship game against Texas. He is not dressed this evening. In fact, he will be sending in plays from the sideline. So what about the young man who replaces him, Bob? Well, James Cox has not played a lot of football, but the Colorado coaches say he's athletic and he understands this offense. Colorado has to run the ball and they have an excellent tailback in you, Charles. He's not very big, but he's the fastest player on the team and he is strong. The best news, Ron, his ankle is finally healthy and he is ready Ready to go. And our third member of the broadcast team, Holly Rowe, down on the sideline, and she just had an opportunity to interview the gentleman who was the interim head coach for the Buffaloes here this evening. Holly? What is the ACC against the Big 12? And Reese Davis, two of the absolute best place kickers in America. Who knows? It may come down to a kickoff. We'll be back with more from Orlando in just a while. Welcome to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Welcome to downtown Orlando, Florida for the Champ Sports Bowl between the Clemson Tigers and the Colorado Buffaloes. There may be no hotter team in the country than Tommy Mountain's Tigers, who have won five of their last six games. They are led by record-setting senior quarterback Charlie Whitehurst, who will conclude his prolific career this afternoon. On the other side, the Buffaloes of Colorado seek to end their much maligned season on a high note. It's Clemson and Colorado in the Champ Sports Bowl next. and Tigers are taking on the Big 12 North Division champion Colorado Buffaloes. ESPN football is broadcast in high definition and is presented by Phillips. The Clemson Tigers, the captains now headed to the 50 yard line for the toss of the coin. The remainder of the team, uh, here they come on the field, the Tigers from Clemson, South Carolina. Hi everybody, Ron Franklin along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down on the sideline. We'll be going to her shortly. Bob, they talk in terms of being a springboard as far as bowl games to what you might anticipate from a team the next year. Would you look at all the, the freshmen and sophomores on this Clemson ball club? This truly could be a springboard for them. Ron, you're exactly right. The future of Clemson football is in great shape because they have some great young players. They had four freshmen make All-American teams led by tailback James Davis. He was the ACC Newcomer of the Year and has game-changing speed. He started since the first snap of the year, had over 140 yards against both North Carolina State and South Carolina. Ron James Davis has a chance to be a great one because he has legitimate speed. For the Colorado Buffaloes, look who has made the trip from Boulder. Ralphie is here. Mike Hankwitz, the interim head coach, comes on the field, and Ralphie will lead the way. Well, 
the story in Colorado has been well documented. The last four weeks have been extremely rocky, and it's been a situation that has to have been a great distraction to this football team and also to the administration. So, Bob, my question to you is, what in the world is going through the minds of these young players from Colorado? Well, Ron, first of all, there's no question this Colorado football team has had to deal with a lot of negatives. They lost their last three games. There's been a coaching change. Their starting quarterback is out. But trust me, they can win this football game. There's a lot of pride in this program. They've won the Big 12 North title for the last five years. Earlier this year, they were a 7-2 team. Don't underestimate Colorado. They are well coached, and this football team knows how to win. So it is a matchup between the Big 12 Conference and the Atlantic Coast Conference. From Orlando, Florida, Clemson and Colorado, kickoff is coming up next. Ah, tis the season when you're everywhere at once, and then all at once it opens. A window to unwind from the rush, some time to cherish and to cheer. And if you couldn't get there, stay here with us. The Clemson Tigers against the Colorado Buffaloes. Bowl week across America rolls on. This holiday trip is for you. So welcome back to the Champs Sports Bowl. Number 23 Clemson against Colorado. Time now to go down to the sideline to visit with the third member of our broadcast team. Here is Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, Ron, for Colorado, people might wonder what the morale is like for this team who has had a very difficult month. First, an embarrassing loss in the Big 12 championship, 70 to 3. Many of the players feel that their performance down the stretch is one reason that their coach was asked to resign. The players say tonight they will dedicate this game to Gary Barnett. They want to go out and show that he was a good coach and they are a good team. They will also play for their new coach, Dan Hawkins, because he came in in a team meeting and said all positions will be open when I take over. So these Colorado players are viewing tonight as an audition. We'll see how they do on both counts. Okay, Holly, thanks so much. We look forward to hearing from you tonight. On the field, Clemson has won the toss. They have deferred to the second half, which means the Colorado Buffaloes will get the ball on offense first. And here are the starters up front. Columbus, Sanders, Benton, Brian Daniels, and Edwin Harrison. Those are the guys down in the trenches. The specialist, Kloppenstein at tight end. Dusty Sprague and Evan Judge are the two starters at wide receiver. And in the backfield, it will be James Cox at quarterback to be flanked by Hugh Charles, an outstanding sophomore running back out of Keller, Texas, and Lawrence Vickers, number 17, who is a each back slash tight end will see him in the backfield, but also lined up, flanked out as well. Clemson with the opening kickoff, and here we go. Stephon Robinson about five yards deep in the end zone, and he will not return it. So James Cox. Bob, a little bit more on him. I know the youngster started against Iowa State, but he does not have a lot of snaps uh, under his belt, so to speak. Ron, you're right. He's thrown 29 passes this year, one for eight against Texas in the Big 12 championship game when Joel Klatt went out. Important that he gains the respect of his teammates, particularly early in this football game for Colorado. Well, Joel Klatt, because of that uh, concussion that he suffered, he'll be unable to play here this afternoon, but he is on the sideline, and he's signaling in offensive play. First throw, first play of the ball game, gain of 15 yards as the pass goes to Evan Judge, a possession type receiver, and he does a great job of picking up 15 yards. Here are the starters on defense for the Tigers. These two defensive ends are very good Charles Bennett and Gaines Adams, and it is uh, McKissick and Trey Tate at the defensive tackles. The linebackers keep an eye on number 20, Tremaine Billy. He can fly, undersized for a linebacker, can really run. And in the secondary, it is Coleman and Hill at the quarterback spots, and Watkins and or Fudge and Hamlin at the safety positions. This running play by Charles is gonna go for very short yardage. And that tackle made by the young man we were just talking about, number 20, Tremaine Billy. As you look at this Colorado football team, Ron, their playmakers are at tailback and tight end. We look at Joel Clad on the sidelines. This is the other playmaker who's obviously not playing in this game because of concussion syndrome, but they are a tailback tight end 
oriented offense. And don't misunderstand, the headset is not uh, just there for that ball incomplete. Clemson hustles down for it, and the officials say incomplete pass. Uh, the headset is not just uh, something for a little window dressing. He literally is helping call the offensive plays. And Ron, the significance of this, obviously Joel Clapp, the starter, but the Colorado team voted him their MVP by vote of teammates. So obviously the leadership ability of this guy really missed here in the Colorado offense. So they picked up first 15 yards on uh, the very first play of the afternoon. It is now third down, and they need to take it out to the 46. Shotgun formation. Steps up into the pocket, going to try to run, and he will be tackled for a one-yard loss. It'll be kicking time as Charles Bennett, one of those defensive ends that I was talking about, with a really good job of coming upfield and making the tackle on the quarterback, James Cox. And Ron, one of the knocks on James Cox, he wants to tuck the ball and run. If his first receiver's covered, he always wants to tuck it and run instead of looking for a secondary receiver. And you see that right there early in this football game. The deep man is Stucky. Torp is the punter, waits for the snap, a left footer at the 22, and here's the boot. Good high coverage kick. Wow, this is a dandy. Going to bound, it hits hard at the 19-yard line. It's going to go all the way into the end zone. That is 63 yards on his opening punt of the night. The starters on offense for the Clemson Tigers. It'll be Richardson and Fry, Dustin Fry at center. Chip Myrick and Nathan Bennett will start tonight at right tackle. The specialist, Chancey Stuckey, along with Curtis Bayham at the wide receiver positions. Thomas Hunter is the tight end. And in the backfield, the quarterback, Charlie Whitehurst, along with Cliff Harrell, the fullback, and James Davis, the tailback. And you could look for number one, James Davis, to carry the mail a lot here this evening. Bayham in motion, and they throw the bubble screen on the first play. That is complete to Kelly, and he is going to go for short yardage to around the 24-yard line. And we look at Charlie Whitehurst, arthroscopic shoulder surgery after the season on his right shoulder. And Ron, look for Clemson to throw a lot of those screens, a lot of quick passes against this Colorado defense because Colorado plays a lot of off coverage, meaning their corners give a lot of cushion. Colorado with the player shaken up. We'll get a number here, I believe. That's Jarrett Burl, the starter at uh, left corner tonight, being helped to the sideline by the trainers. Second and six, first carry by Davis. Has an opening. Tracks his way across the 30. That's good for the first down. He'll be tackled at the 32-yard line. It's a gain of eight. Henderson making the defensive stop. Here are the starters on defense for the Colorado Buffaloes. It is uh, Maurice Lucas, uh, James Gary, Baca Manapuna, and Abraham Wright, the down four. The linebackers, Washington, Dizon, and Iwu. And in the secondary, Burl started but is not back in the ball game as yet. Gardner McKay is there along with Henderson, Billingsley, and Sims. And this play will go for very short yardage as they take it to the right side. And a gain of about one as a flag is down. And I think Maurice Lucas came out of his stance and was offside. Mark curls the referee Number 91 tonight. defense five yard penalty still first down these officials as you could see from the Sunbelt Conference Mike Hankwitz a veteran defensive coach the interim head coach in this ball game tonight he was one and seven as the Arizona interim head coach in 03 when John McAvick was released of his duties out there in Tucson. Really, his mechanics run will not change a whole lot. He is still the defensive coordinator, going to call all the defensive plays here in this football game. 
quick pass out in the flat. Got that one uh, complete to Stuckey. And Stuckey is going to take it out close to the first down, pushed out by Lorenzo Sims Jr. Ron, we look at these Clemson keys to success. I think right off the bat, you see attack off coverage. Colorado good against the run, but they play their corners off, throw those quick passes out in the flats. Screen passes are critical and protect zone blitz. Mike Hankwitz in Colorado loves to bring pressure from the field, play zone behind it. Four wide receiver set. Number 13 is Grisham in motion. Moving along the line of scrimmage. Davis gets the handoff, and it's going to be a first down. Davis and uh, Iwu will make the tackle. Obviously, Ron, the experienced quarterback, Charlie Whitehurst, senior quarterback, a great job with the cadence in this game. Offside, number 91, defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. So Maurice Lucas, obviously, as you look at the cadence and watch the hard count, watch his head. Really, Ron, he got both defensive ends, but the true freshman, Maurice Lucas, number 91, that's his second offsides penalty in this football game. See the Colorado penalties of the season. Whitehurst. Hands the ball off to Davis, and Davis is going to go for very short yards as he is engulfed immediately by Dizon. Jordan Dizon, a senior out of Mayflower, Arkansas. Run the start of every football game critical, but you have the feeling for this Colorado team with all they've been through, all the issues, all the distractions, the early part of this football game is critical for them, particularly coming off the back-to-back -back blowout, blowout losses to Nebraska and Texas. So it's going to be second down and long. Good job of stopping Clemson on first down with a gain of only one. As they need to take it across the 45 down to the 44-yard line. And that's Davis who moves back in line with the quarterback and whistles are down and flags are down I should say. The lab game number six offense five yard penalty still second down. You look at Tommy Bowden two new coordinators both on offense and defense the new offensive coordinator for Clemson. Rob Spence, who came over from Toledo. As we look at Colorado's late season collapse right there. Keep in mind, they were a 7 and 2 football team going into that last three games. Yeah, they were rolling. There's no question about that. That's Stucky in motion. Whitehurst steps up, going to go on top and thrown behind the intended receiver, Kelly. Boy, Kelly was there and he got him turned around. Ron, you said it. Aaron Kelly, the freshman wide receiver, is going to be wide open right here on the corner route. Charlie Whitehurst just threw it behind him. Keep in mind, Charlie Whitehurst coming off arthroscopic surgery on his right shoulder after the season, which is really remarkable when you think about that. No, no question about that. Third down, and still Bob, they've got to take it to the 44. Look for Stuckey, the leading receiver in the Atlantic Coast Conference with 62 grabs. For 761 yards, but they throw to Davis on the screen, and that is a great job defensively as the tackle is made actually behind the line of scrimmage. And it looks like Manapuna, Vaca Manapuna, a senior who is out of Hawaii. Vaca Manapuno, right here, the nose guard, Ron, spying out of there, comes flat down the line of scrimmage, and I think this is a key stop for Colorado. Keep in mind, Clemson, four punts blocked this season. Chasen, a junior out of Roswell, Georgia. And they almost got it. And now a flag comes down. They did get it. So the flag is going to come up. A piece of the ball was got that's been picked up by Clemson. But I believe Vance Washington is the man who came in to block it. Now the referee will confer with his uh, fellow officials and what they're going to say is yes the ball was touched which means roughing the kicker or running into the kicker is off. Vance Washington came through 
and got a hand on the football. There was no foul for running into the kicker. The ball was tipped. First down, Colorado. Ron, obviously, all bets are off if the ball is tipped, and a great break right there for Colorado. Show let's take a timeout. We'll be back with more from Orlando. No score right now, but uh, a partially blocked kick on the part of Colorado. So we are back. Vance Washington is the young man who made the special teams play. Now, the ball did go forward, so it was touched dead at the 36 yard line, and that's where Colorado will take over. The crowd is still booing, and it is a partisan Clemson house. But we'll show you on the replay after this first play from scrimmage here on this series that the ball was, in fact, touched. Clemson shows blitz. Going to go on top with the pass, and it is overthrown and incomplete. Let's go back and take a look. Watch Washington. The first thing, Ron, Clemson is a shield punt protection team. They put the three big guys back. This is the fifth block punt they've given up this year. You see Vance Washington come clean. Now, he tipped the football. Once you tip it, all bets are off. His helmet made contact with the leg, but here you'll see right there. Yeah. Vance didn't get much, but he tipped it enough that there was no running into the kicker called. So the flag was picked up. No gain in that incomplete pass on first down. But Colorado with good field position. He'll go with a running play. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Trying to spin off the tackle. Hugh Charles. And he is going to wind up with a loss of about three yards in the play. Charles Bennett. We talked about the activeness of these two defensive ends. Watch this. They have an excellent front four. But C.J. Gaddis also the safety up there involved in the tackle along with Charles Bennett. So it's going to be third down Colorado. So they get a little bit of a break on the tip punt, but right now they're facing third down and 12. They've got to go all the way out to the 46 yard line. Here comes pressure, sets up the screen, and Charles, the running back, did not turn around. Very dangerous indeed, because there were white jerseys all around the play. And that ball could have been picked off. And Ron, how about the kicking game in this football game? Two great, and I'm talking about great place kickers, but also a tremendous punter for Colorado, number 29, John Torp. 63 this guy yards kills it. on his very first punt of the night. As you look at uh, Chancey Stuckey, who was back deep, and he's dropped off this time back inside his own 25 yard line. Here comes the pressure and the boot by the left foot, and it is another Skywalker. Stucky all the way back with a fair catch, and they will say at the 14 yard line. That is a kick of 52 yards. We'll be right back with more from Orlando. ESPN College Football, the Champ Sports Bowl, is brought to you by Champ Sports. Everything for the player and the fan. Champ Sports, where sport lives. And in part by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? So we are back. Cold last night in this part of Florida. Went into the upper 30s, but in the 60s today, and we're supposed to go down to like the upper 40s by the end of this game this evening. Perfect football weather. Running play with Davis turns it back into the sideline waits nicely for his blockers and he'll be tackled at the 19 and Holly Rowe let's check on the sideline with you. Well guys as you mentioned earlier Charlie Whitehurst had surgery on December 1st about the last four games of the season he said he was getting a shot every game to numb his shoulder he was in so much pain just allowing him to play but December 1st he had the surgery by December 10th he was back throwing the ball. Guys, the coaches say he's 100%. He says he's pain-free, and so far in these early throws, we've seen no ill effects of the arth arthroscopic surgery that cleaned up some cartilage in his shoulder. Here comes the blitz, hands it off to Davis, finds a crease, look out. 
takes it across the 35 and out in the vicinity of the 39 yard line. Washington on the tackle. It's a gain of 21. And we just got a report from the sideline that Jarrett Burrell has a concussion, may not come back for Colorado. Ron, you look at James Davis, a true freshman out of Douglas High School in Atlanta, the same high school that Jamal Lewis of the Baltimore Ravens went to. This guy broke all of Jamal's records in high school. He truly has a chance to be a great one because he has game changing speed. Four carries for 35 yards. Thomas Hunter, number 89, one of the tight ends, was out there with a paving block. Play action pass, got a man wide open, throws it complete to Bayham, and a big chunk of real estate here and a gain of 20. Billingsley finally made the stop for Colorado. Excellent route right here. Clemson's going to take the outside receiver. He's going to run down the field. Then the inside receiver is going to come and underneath. The outside receiver clears. The inside receiver runs the corner route. Excellent route right there. J.J. Billingsley, the strong safety, ends up playing that route man-to-man. -man. Tough to defend from the inside out. First down, Davis hit behind the line of scrimmage. Going to be knocked down for a loss. You know, the tight end situation with Clemson, they normally rotate three people. Bobby Williamson unable to go tonight. He is an academic casualty. Well, Thomas Hunter gets the start in his place. And you talk about true irony. Hunter gets the start. Bobby Williamson, an academic casualty. Thomas Hunter happens to have the highest GPA on the Clemson squad <laughs> at 3.7. Yeah, in biochemistry, too. That's not the easiest major to have that high GPA. In. Not at all. Whitehurst steps up, going to try to run it. Charlie slides down very wisely at the 40-yard line. Marcus Burton was all over him and quickly. And I think the thing you see about Charlie Whitehurst, he has everything the NFL is really looking for. Big, tall guy, strong arm. He can run, but he's much more comfortable run in the pocket. He's athletic enough to run, but he likes to sit in that pocket. Clemson would love to do more play action, but that's not really his strength. But as far as just dropping back and throwing it, he can throw the football. Charlie's father played in Furman, well documented, played in the National Football League with the Green Bay Packers. Third down, they need to take it to the 30 yard line. Puts one up, got a man open, and he over it. No, he did not. He caught the ball. Curtis Bayhan made a liar out of me. I thought it was well over his head. You talk about athleticism over the top of Lorenzo Sims Jr. And Ron, they caught him in too deep. The corner doesn't sink enough. The safety can't get over the top, but you're right. That is a pretty picture. Curtis Bayham, the senior receiver, goes up and makes a play. His dad played for me at Tulane. A defensive back played, played in the NFL. Played in the NFL at Seattle and is now a color analyst for CSTV, I believe. Yeah. So uh, I'll be darned. Timeout is called by Colorado. Show with six minutes and 13 seconds left to play in this opening quarter. Uh, we will go away for a moment. No score, but Clemson is threatening. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Orlando, Florida, the Champ Sports Bowl. Clemson, number 23 in the country against the Colorado Buffaloes, winners of the Big 12 North. The second meeting between these two, the first meeting, 1957, and Colorado won that one. Ron, this is a talented, talented young Clemson football team. You mentioned four freshman All-Americans on this team, three of them on defense. Jane Davis, the tailback on offense. Davis goes in motion. That's Harris split to the top of your screen. They throw the quick screen to Davis. Going to be hit. Beg your pardon, uh, to uh, Stucky, number two rather than number one. And he's got some uh, quick movement and will take it down to the 10 and a half yard line. Anytime you throw those bubble screens, receivers have to block. You see Aaron Kelly, the six foot five freshman out there blocking. Aaron Kelly's gained 20 pounds since he's come to Clemson. He's only 180 now, Ron. So when he came to Clemson, he that many was 160 at six foot five. And we'll tell the story. It's interesting how Kelly wound up being recommended and how he wound up at Clemson. This is the eighth play of the drive. It started on the 14. Davis is going to be gobbled up by black jerseys. A gain of about a half yard, and now it's third down. 
and they need to take it to the five and a half yard line. It is a Washington on the tackle. And this Clemson offense, as we look at Tommy Bowden, much improved run over last year. 100 yards a game in total offense over last year. Last year they were 110th in the country out of 117 teams total offense. This year they're 49th. Rob Spence, the coordinator, came in. They made a commitment to run the football this year. Bayham is the man set at the top of your screen. As Stucky goes in motion, quick pass and that ball hit at the line of scrimmage. Washington. Well, Thaddeus Washington, the linebacker, all over the tight end, Thomas Hunter. Yes. But as you mentioned, the ball batted at the line of scrimmage. Right here, the tight end, no question. I'd like to see a replay of that if we could. Well, it's going to be a field goal attempt. Jad Dean comes in to attempt, as you can see, his numbers 22 of 29. This is a 26 yarder from just about the left hash mark. High pass, but gathered in and the kick, plenty of leg on this one, and he's good. So we'll take a timeout. 523 left, opening quarter, and comes and goes on top, three to nothing. Well, the sun about to set here in this uh, part of Florida. Bob, that ball was not tipped a moment ago. The pass it, it was for the tight end. And Ron, let's go back to the third down call. Keep your eye on Thaddeus Washington, the linebacker. He actually makes contact on Thomas Hunter before the football's in the air. Right there in college football, you are allowed to knock that receiver down as long as it's not flagrant, as long as you don't hold him, and as long as the football is not in the air. And you so. can also say, if you look at that replay again, there was not malice in Porto. He is playing his area, and an enemy came in there, and he just gave him a forearm shiver, just knocked him flat. Here's the kick. This one, the one yard deep, is going to be returnable by Robinson. And he hands it off on the reverse. Hugh Charles finally is going to be stopped out around the 30 yard line. Well, ESPN's bowl doubleheader continues next. The rematch of the 1978 Garden State Bowl. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights meet the Arizona State Sun Devils and the Inside Bowl, which is also available in high definition on ESPN. The Inside Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Ron, I have an amazing stat for you. This makes you nervous if you're Colorado's offense. They have not scored an offensive touchdown in the last two games. Colorado's offense, Clemson's defense has not given up an offensive touchdown in the last two games, and that was against Steve Spurrier and Bobby Bowden, Florida State and South Carolina. So I don't think there's going to be a lot of points in this game. Low scoring game. Low scoring <laughs> game. Well, they'll give the ball to Hugh Charles, and boy, he is just knocked out at the line of scrimmage. Tremaine Billy, along with Anthony Waters, combining on the stop. You know, folks, what's interesting, Bob was talking about off the top of the telecast, we got the entire evening to address it more. But so many of these guys we're calling out their name have got JR and SO by their name. And even freshmen, sophomore, junior, and also freshman, a young Clemson football team. Don't be surprised, even with the loss of Whitehurst, that they're not highly ranked in the preseason in 06. Here's Charles. Nope. He held on to a great fake at the ball thrown to Klopfenstein, and the tight end can't hold on to it. He drops it. Ron, pressure by Anthony Waters, but the difference between James Cox and Joel Klopp, accuracy throwing the football, and that's why James Cox has not been able to beat Joel Klopp out. Joel Klopp getting more face time over there than uh, Mike Hankowitz, and he's gone from Starting quarterback to head coach, offensive coordinator in one game. Cox is one of five. That was his first pass of the night, good for 16 yards. He is one of five, has missed his other four. Stepping up into the pocket, got a man there, threw it too tall, and that one for Kloppenstein, the tight end, and he had a step on Michael Hamlin, the safety. Now, some of the players having to be separated at the line of scrimmage, so Attitudes are such that we told you 
Colorado's had a tough time but they'll play hard if they are right now. And Ron one thing Clemson does a great job is twisting these defensive linemen I mean, they are a front four rush team but they do a great job twisting and a good job by Colorado's offensive line of picking those twist stunts up but all night you're going to see those twists. Stucky the deep man get an opportunity to see John Torp again. Torp's first two punts tonight 63 on the first one and 52 on the second and I believe we had unofficially here in the booth that the hang time in the first one was 4.6 and the second one was 4.7 you're not going to have many returns Bob baby when you're hanging them almost five seconds and they always want to talk about Colorado's kickers the advantage of the altitude I don't think we're real high altitude right now Ron. just above the beach here's another wow. driver good heavens at the 10 this is taking a favorable bounce oh. and it's going to be touched dead at the one yard line Good heavens, what a play after a 68 yard punt. And Terry Washington got downfield to make the touch. Let's go down to the sideline. Holly Rowe, top that. Well, I am going to top that because I'm here with the Pro Bowl linebacker from the Ravens, Ray Lewis. What brings you to the Champ Sports Bowl? Uh, you know what? Through the blessings of God, my little boy, uh, my seven year old child, Rayshard Lewis. He plays part one of football for Lake Mary. Uh, and I just came out here to see him play this morning. And, he, you know, they've done a great job. They're doing some great things. All right. How old was he? Seven years old, and you've already got him playing football. You know what? Every time he touches the football, he's a magician with it. So, you know, I'm just always excited to see him play. He loves football more than I love it. And, and, and right now, that's a great thing. All right. He's seven years old, but what kind of technique are you teaching him right now? You know what? You know, the last time I saw my little boy play, the last time I critiqued his film, because I critiqued all his film. And there's only two people that I that I say right now that he reminds me of, and that's Gail Sayers and Reggie Bush. Truthfully. All right, well, he's seven, guys. We'll talk to you more about it later. Okay, Holly, thanks so much. That's uh, Rendrick Taylor receiving that pass. Going to be bumped out of bounds around the five-yard line. So, obviously, uh, father on the defensive side of the ball and his son on the offensive yeah, side of the ball. That's kind of disappointing in a way. <laughs> Holly better grab Ray and say, look, get that guy over on defense, man. <laughs> Getting oh, soft, letting them go to tailback, all the glory position. I'll tell you what, the interesting thing in this ball game, the punter, John Torp for Colorado, has really flipped the field a couple of times. Here's a screen pass hit behind the line is Aaron Kelly, and that is a nice defensive play by Brian Ewu, the linebacker. Ron, you mentioned that is a great play by the linebacker. He closes right there. And the big tight end, number 90, Cole Downer, just got out quick in the open field by Brian Ewood. Bobby, ready for this? The average on the three punts for Colorado, 60.7 per boot. That's pretty good. Oh, you <laughs> flip the good. field every time, won't you? And this is a key third down right now for this Colorado defense. They need to take it out to the 12-yard line. Great protection ball as if has it complete. Did he hold on to it? The officials are saying incomplete as Stucky couldn't hold on to it. Was Ryan Walters, a redshirt freshman out of Aurora, Colorado, who makes the hit. And Ron Chancy Stucky goes up, and an excellent play by Ryan Walters. You mentioned the freshman just takes his legs out from underneath him, and a big, big stop for Colorado. And can they block a punt? You get the feeling if Colorado is going to score a run, it's going to take something like block punt or tremendous field position. Clemson with five punts blocked on this season. Well, they've already got one tonight, so let's keep a close eye. Cole Chase gets the snap, and I'll tell you what, that one I believe was touched. It's going to come out of bounds. Either that Bob or he went across it with his foot. It's out of bounds at around the 30-yard line, and that was Chad Cusworth who was very close to getting a hand on the football and we'll go back and look at a replay and see if in fact he did and Ron it's tough to be a punter right now with these shield punt protection teams isn't it amazing how everything goes through cycles in college football the shield punt the rugby punt in vogue the last couple of years now it seems like punt block teams have caught up with that scheme and maybe this is the spot Colorado needed right here well special teams that's been the name of the game it certainly has not been offense Keep an eye for number 17, Lawrence Vickers. 
They really like to use him in situations like this, and he gets the handoff. And he'll take it to the left side and again a very close to seven. Charles Bennett, the left defensive end, is there to stop it. Wow. <laughs> it looks like it looks like the Toro dumped on him. I think the field on his head here. Got a little tough on that. I'm telling you, it looked like they just took the grass bag and poured it over his head. Second down. They need to take it just inside the 20 yard line. Hugh Charles back in the ball game at tailback. He'll get the handoff. Left side turns it up, has the first down. Down the sideline. 10, 5. They say out of bounds, back at the 10 and a half yard line. Boy, well, Hugh Charles shows you he can scoot. He has legitimate speed and a great block by number 70, the big offensive guard for Colorado, Ron, rocking around right there. The Hugh Charles out of Dallas, Texas, legitimate speed, Ron, the fastest kid on this Colorado football team. You also saw that block, Bob, number eight, Alvin Barnett. Help pave the way for that 13 yard run. So, with his first down for the Colorado Buffaloes, they trail three to nothing. They can get a first down without scoring. They string it up, and he maybe has a couple of yards out of the play. Hugh Charles just they kept stringing him out, and with the speed of that secondary for Clemson, not going to do much. Boy, Ron, in the kicking game, the kicking game, the way Colorado has punted that football. John Torp and then the poor punt protection and punting of the Clemson football team and a game dominated by Clemson when the ball snapped but because of kicking game Colorado a chance right now to jump ahead in this game Torp the young man you were looking at just now averaging 60.7 yards per boot and he's punted the ball three times here in the first quarter draw play Nothing doing going to be hit and knocked down for a loss as Hugh Charles for some reason slowed down as he got to the line of scrimmage and Bob he is so small at 5 8 185 it, not much uh, you're going to be able to do when you get uh, grabbed a hold of by a 300 pound you're right I mean Hugh Charles a heck of a football player but he's not very big but interesting story this guy is a has his private pilot license got it when he was a junior in high school he told me yesterday his family owns two chicken wings franchises in Fort Worth so I tried to get us a free pass maybe when you're passing through DFW you can go over there and get some wings yeah with South Lake which is a uh, Keller and they flip it back to him he wanted to throw the ball or lost the handle one of the two and he's going to be tackled for a loss by Charles Bennett who has been all over this field that's four tackles for Bennett in this opening quarter alone but I'll tell you what, Ron, we get an opportunity after the end of this first quarter to see Mason Crosby. Colorado's coaches told me yesterday he is the Tiger Woods of field goal kicking. So that is the end of the opening quarter. When we come back, we'll have an opportunity to see the junior out of Georgetown, Texas, Mason Crosby in the wings with a field goal attempt, a long one this time. So welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the Champs Sports Bowl. I'm Ron Franklin along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe from Orlando, Florida. And our scores three to nothing Clemson and Colorado with an opportunity to tie this ball game. Mason Crosby we talked a lot about him. Understand one thing. He has the longest field goal off the ground not off a tee in NCAA history. 58 yards. And he's four or five run over 50 on the road, including a 58 yarder at Miami, so it has nothing to do with altitude. 10 of 11 from this range. Ball is down, and boy, tons of distance on it, and he splits it. So we'll hold it right here. Tell you, down in Central Texas, everybody asks the question how in the world did he get away from the Longhorns? Georgetown is about 20 miles to the north of Austin, Texas. And he's a junior thinking about coming out in the NFL draft. And what a great matchup comparison, Ron, between these two kickers, Jad Dean and Mason Crosby. But Mason Crosby, the long distance guy. I mean, five for seven over 50 yards. 43 touchbacks on kickoffs. He's kicked the ball off 61 times. He's had 43 touchbacks. 
Bobbis go down to the sideline. Holly Rowe has got more on Crosby and, and Holly. How many kickers have you known that were thinking about coming out early? The only one I can even think of is uh, Janikowski from Florida State. But the more interesting thing, guys, is actually these two guys have become great buddies. Jack Dean of Clemson, when he got the finalist list for the Groza Award, saw that it was Mason Crosby. So he looked up his email address on the Colorado student website and sent him an email. So these guys have been emailing cross country for the last couple of weeks. They hung out and played golf at the Home Depot Awards, and they have developed a great respect for each other and even shared some kicking tips. So, hey, good two friends here. Both got their teams on the scoreboard early. Okay, Holly, here comes the kick. Return from the one yard line, Aaron Kelly breaks by a tackle, and the long angular one is gonna come around close to the 24 yard line. Well, our aerial coverage is courtesy of the Goodyear Tire Rubber Company. It's fleet of airships reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's Assurance Tires. By the way, Holly was talking about how good of friends that Dean and Crosby have come. We also need to mention and a congratulations to Alex Cerna of o Oregon State University. He was the winner of the Groza Award, the kicking award this year. Three outstanding kickers in collegiate football this year. And if Crosby comes back, he'll have a heck of a shot at winning it again next year. And so will Dean. Ron, you feel momentum shifting a little bit to Colorado. You know, a lot of people ask us all week, what does Colorado have to play for? They have a lot to play for. Ball start. Number 64, offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. You know, Ron, don't ever underestimate pride. And the pride in the fact that this Colorado football team wants to show that they were a 7 and 2 football team and a good football team and not the team that lost the last three games of the year. So it's first down and 15. Pass thrown complete to Grisham. And Gresham will turn it upfield for a game of maybe about three and a half yards, and that is it. When you look at the early games that Colorado won, you understand, hey, they not only were rocking along as a seven and two team, they had beaten some good opposition along the way. But they lost those last two in such unbelievably high scoring fashion. In the it game at Iowa State, excuse me, Ron. Colorado gave up a 66 yard fumble recovery for a touchdown and a 66 yard interception for a touchdown, which started the whole slag. Whitehurst got it complete, and that's Grisham. And Grisham will take it out across midfield and down to the 47 yard line. That's good for 28 yards. No question right there. A broken coverage by Colorado. They're playing three deep. The corner runs with the inside post route. The linebacker doesn't run with the wheel route, but the corner has to come off and give that linebacker some help. But a well-designed play to attack that corner. Whitehurst is now 7 of 10 for 77 yards. That was Gardner McKay who came over to make the defensive play. Gresham resets to the near side of the field. Play action. They want to throw back a screen, but yep. And they got it open, and that's Davis. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Clemson. And Ron, there is a flag down on the field. This one may come back. And Bob, when you see the replay, Colorado had a defender in the neighborhood and overran the play. Davis continued to move downfield. That's the reason he was wide open. You're exactly right. Clemson on the throwback and screen. And now receiver downfield, number 75, offense. And the question Five becomes now, Ron, Repeat for the ball was not thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Because the ball was thrown on Colorado's side of the line of scrimmage, the lineman cannot be downfield. You see the line of scrimmage right there at the 47-yard line. And let's see where this football is thrown as we roll it. You say it exactly right. They want the throwback screen. It's covered. Excellent call. The ball was thrown to the 45 yard line. Clemson with lineman downfield. So the pitch back comes to Davis. Turns the oh. corner. Will does he get hit at the 50 yard line? 
That is a Dizon, Jordan Dizon, who comes over and listen to this one at full speed. That's how they hit in Hawaii now. Jordan Dizon came to Colorado last year as a true freshman from Hawaii, started last year as a true freshman. You see the kind of explosiveness he has. Show with the loss on the plate. Second down. They need to take it to the 37-yard line. Pressure off the corner. Whitehurst is going to be hit, and he is sacked for the first time tonight at the 45-yard line. And this is Thaddeus Washington, who is there to make the tackle. And Ron Steven Jackson, the fullback from Clemson, had a chance to step up and make a block right there. And Thaddeus Washington just whipped him and came underneath. But Clemson in position to protect. Look right there at the top. Excellent effort. And right now, momentum on the side of the Buffaloes. This makes it third down at a long way. We're saying 18 yards. It is at least that. Down to the 37 is where they have to go. Four wide receiver set. Whiter is going to go on top, and he has a man. Kelly outstretched and couldn't get it. Henderson is the man that, that he had beaten. And Aaron Kelly, the freshman, Ron, you mentioned it. He was behind Tyrone Henderson, and you get the feeling right now, Colorado getting some probably well-deserved breaks early in this football game, keeping them in this game. Okay. Let's see if Clemson can get this punt I started to say, now let's turn our attention to Cole Chasen, the junior out of Roswell, Georgia. They have really been putting pressure on him. He got a piece of one and almost the last one. And they're coming again. He gets this one away. Not a long kick. They're last in the conference in punting. And that ball is going to be touched dead. And we will take a break. Tied at three, Colorado and Clemson. 38 yards on that boot. So welcome back. Great aerial view of uh, the Champ Sports Bowl here in Orlando, Clemson. And Colorado, and we're tied at three. The second meeting between these two. Colorado won the first one back in 1957. Clemson won five of their last six ball games. But the difference in this ball game tonight has been special teams. John Thornton, three punts, 60.7 is average, and one of the Clemson uh, punts has been partially blocked. So the field advantage, every time Clemson gets field advantage, the field has been flipped as the expression goes by the punter Torque. Sprague in motion but they go with the running play and it's Hugh Charles just nothing there. Nick Watkins a sophomore out of New Orleans Louisiana comes up to make the initial contact number 32. Ron you forget about running east and west or sideways if you're Colorado because Clemson a decided speed advantage in this football game on both sides of the ball but you better run right at them if you're Colorado you're not going to gain a yard going sideways. James Cox one of six throwing in the ball game you see the total yards only 24 for the Buffalo so far. The defense and special teams is what has kept them in this ball game. Quick throw got that one incomplete dropped by Evan Judge senior out of Scottsdale Arizona. I still think as we talked during the timeout that is the best throw for him to throw instead of dropping him deep in the pocket and giving him so much time and things to think about throw the quick three step get rid of the football. I agree. I mean he seems to press when he gets in the pocket and he has time but you look right there that means he's two of 15 run. If you include the Texas game where he was one for eight, accuracy is the problem James Cox has. Well, he's missed his last six. Third down. They need to take it out to the 27 yard line if they want to hold on to the football. See the blitz coming off the corner with Watkins. Watkins trying to run him down, and he does. Quarterback sandwich right there. Dwayne Coleman and Watkins, number 32, combining on the stop. Whoa, what a hit. And you see James Cox, he wants to take off and run. We're going to get a holding penalty right here, I believe, on Colorado, which Clemson will decline. 
but two things, Ron. James Cox not accurate, and the second thing, he wants to take off Holding and run. Number 77, offense. The penalties declined. Fourth down. I'll tell you what, this might teach him to stay in that pocket. Watch this lick after he takes off and runs with his football. See, there's Watkins right behind him. Boom. And then number three, Dwayne Coleman comes up, and they just, as I said, make a quarterback sandwich out of him. And it is going to be punting time again. Let's see if John Torp can do it for a fourth time. Last punt, 67 yards. Aaron Kelly, the deep man. And they've got a return on this time, and not as good a kick. Kelly lets it bound now takes a Colorado bounce and is going to be touched dead at the 35 yard line. Let's go down to the sideline and Holly Road. Well I'm here with the vice president of marketing for Champ Sports Rob Brutterson and Rob why is it important for Champ Sports to be involved in the bowl game. Well Holly we pride ourselves on being the destination in the mall for the core sports fan. So what a better way to emphasize that point than be able to bring our own bowl game. Well I heard that you guys are one of the only sp sponsors in all of the bowls that are sports related. How does that help. Well, obviously, we want someone to go in the mall and go right to our store if they're looking for the jerseys and T-shirts, half athletic, athletic footwear. So we pride ourselves on being able to bring that to the consumer and obviously being able to reinforce it with a game like this. It just tells a complete story for us. All right, I know these kids had a great time down here. Thanks for your support. Thanks so much. Happy holidays. Okay, see you. Champ Sports Marketing Vice President Rob Broderson. Okay, Holly, that ball carried by Reggie Merriweather, Jr., out of North Augusta, South Carolina. First time we've seen him in the ball game. He is relieving James Davis. Jared Burrow, by the way, made that tackle. So good to report that he is back on the field of play. They were afraid that he had suffered a mild concussion. But I'm sure if that had been the case, that the doctors would not have allowed him back out on the field of play. So good to see him back. Libertyville, Illinois. Lynch coming up the middle. Quick pass by Whitehurst, and he threw that one away. And quite frankly, threw it a little too far in front, and it was a wise move. That play was not going to go very far. Covered defensively very quickly by the secondary and the linebackers of the Colorado Buffaloes. Terry Washington was all over him. Ron, everybody worried all week about Colorado ready to play this football game. I worried a little bit about Clemson with so many young players. Granted, they're young, talented players. But having watched Colorado in those three high-profile games at the end of the season lose as significantly as they did, you worry about Clemson a little bit, taking this Colorado team for granted. 10-15 left until halftime. Colorado Clemson tied at three. ESPN College Football, the Champ Sports Bowl, is brought to you by Champ Sports. Everything for the player and the fan. Champ Sports, where sport lives. And in part by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Well, of course, every kid in America knows that scene, the Magic Kingdom. And as far as the Buffaloes of Colorado are concerned, trying to create a little magic of their own, but they got to improve the offense. 31 total yards so far. Clemson with 128, but we are tied. Whitehurst blitz coming up the middle gets the ball away has it complete to Thomas Hunter and the tight end out of Marion South Carolina will take it for 10 yards Manapuna is the man who was applying the pressure on quarterback Charlie Whitehurst for the first time tonight Colorado blitzes they end up man to man coverage with Tyrone Henderson the safety on the tight end Thomas Hunter good pass protection and good quick release by Charlie Whitehurst for the first down. Here's Manapuna, 6'1", 290 pounds. Merriweather, number 37 in the ball game at tailback. They fake the pitch to him. Whitehurst just going to throw this one away. Cole Downer, the tight end, I think was the intended receiver. Alex Ligon, a junior out of Torrance, California, was really putting on some pressure. And run the defensive end, Abraham Wright, who is in a three-point stance at the top will come out of that three point stance and cover this crossing route as we see excellent pressure right there by Alex Lagun. So the clock nine minutes and 51 seconds left until halftime. 
Merriweather now the backfield is empty and Merriweather is the man even out of your screen split wide to the right but they go back to the left side and that's the tight end Thomas Hunter not going to have the first down I don't believe very close to it and Dizon Jordan Dizon was there to make the tackle yeah, I think he's going to be about a yard short one thing about a Rob Spence offense the offensive coordinator for Clemson the quarterback Ron will throw for a high passing percentage. Charlie Whitehurst 65 percent completion this year last year only 50 percent and those quarterbacks at Toledo always around 70 percent movement that time flags are down and he's just going to take it for a quarterback sneak. I know that Manapuna had moved I couldn't tell if the ball had been snapped or not and we'll listen to the uh, officials who are from the Sunbelt Conference sort this one out. And it really did. I think you're accurate. Manapuna jumped off that ball. And the offense may have flinched really just to protect themselves. Offsides, number 93, defense. Five yard penalty, first down. Ron, that is a good call. As you see, Manapuno obviously just jump across the line of scrimmage, but he's going to play in the hula ball, and they say he is their most consistent defensive lineman. And hey, he's going back home, but who knows? He might he might have a heck of an outing there. James Davis back in the ball game at tailback, number one, and they hand it to him. Tries to turn the corner, and he's going to be tripped up. That is Jarrett Burl, who got an arm out and made the tackle on James Davis. You said it right. He just got that arm out there, kind of like a pesky little gnat yeah. in there underneath all those big linemen. That's his, got James Davis to the ground. That's like a little brother. Just reaches that arm out and uh, tries to make make the trip, and he did. One thing about those stats, I don't say unassisted tackle. That's right. That's exactly right. Doesn't say form tackle, picture perfect <laughs> tackle. It just says tackle. James Davis is split wide to the left, but they throw it back into the middle, and that's LaDante Harris. And the ball is going to be down at the 32 yard line. Tyrone Henderson came over to make the tackle. Run, you talk about jailbreak screen, the ball thrown behind the line, and look at the jailbreak. All the Clemson guys downfield, and a great open field tackle by Tyrone Henderson because there was nobody left. But that is an excellent tackle on LaDante Harris. Clemson really throwing the football here a lot more than I thought they would, Ron. Okay, we got a sideline warning, is what that was all about uh, on Clemson, which always brings a few boos from the crowd. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You just joined us. We're tied at three, eight minutes and 33 seconds, and counting left in this opening half. Hunter, the tight end, resets. And a little pass. Davis breaks a tackle, 25 20. The shovel pass inside the 10 yard line. It will be first and goal, Clemson Tigers. Terry Washington makes a stop. After a gain of 23 yards on the shovel pass from Whitehurst to James Davis. And Ron, I think you can see why, in our opinion, James Davis is going to be a great one. This guy has started every snap or the first snap of the year. He left in August in training camp. A true freshman came in, became a little bit disenchanted, went home to Atlanta. The Clemson got him right back. <laughs> he wasn't gone long now. Ninth play of the drive, and now Colorado runs a man on at the very final moment. They only had 10 men on the field, and a timeout is called by Colorado. So let's take the break. Colorado three, Clemson three, and threatening. So welcome back. The starting wide receiver Curtis Bayham heads to the locker room with the trainers. We'll get an update on him. Look at total yards: 175, Clemson 31, Colorado. It is a first down and actually the ball has been spotted outside the 10 so the Tigers could conceivably pick up a first down without scoring the touchdown. Xerox. 
Charlie Whitehurst hands the ball off to James Davis. He'll take it for three tough yards. Tackled by Tyrone Henderson, who comes up from that strong safety position. Ron, I think one reason you see Clemson throwing that football so much. This is a good Colorado team. Rush defense. They come into this game ninth in the country in rushing defense. I said they like to play a lot of zone coverage. They play soft. So Clemson's plan to throw quick passes against zone coverage, not try to run it a whole lot on this good front. Cliff Harrell, number 36, lines up at fullback this time. He is to the left. That's the direction that Hunter goes in, and that's where they run. Tailback carries with the fullback and the tight end in front, and still did not make a great deal of difference because James Gary came in to make the tackle on James Davis. Nice job. Mike Hankwitz, the interim head coach for the Colorado Buffaloes. Colorado, a lot of improvement on defense, Ron. 426 yards a game last year, only 347 yards a game this year. So a much improved defensive football team. So what's third down? Whitehurst deep in the pocket. Sets. Got it right over the middle. Complete to his tight end Hunter. And he lost the ball. And they, they say it is going to be down. So forget the fumble. But he is going to be about a yard and a half to two yards shy. And of course, at this juncture, about 35,000 coaches dressed in orange <laughs> say, let's go for it. Why not? It's not our job. <laughs> I'll tell you what, not a bad situation here to fake a field goal from about the one yard line. As you see, Thomas Hunter is down, Ron. The ground caused that fumble. fumble. But if you're Colorado, play safe field goal block. Don't let them fake this thing. Give them the field goal right here. Chad Dean, a junior out of Greenwood, South Carolina. Is in to attempt an 18 yard field goal. Ball is down, the kick is up, and you see the quick height he got on that kick, and he breaks the tie. 548 left until halftime at our new score Clemson six and Colorado three. Ron, we have to talk a little bit about Gary Barnett, and I think speaking from within the coaching profession this guy is a well well respected head coach and I think the coaching job he did the last couple of years with all the distractions you know when it's easy it's easy but I think he did a tremendous job the last several years of keeping this program afloat what I see it in Colorado just here watching the first half recruiting in my opinion has dropped off I don't think they have a lot of team speed and it's only natural with all the adversity they faced as highly publicized as it's been that recruiting would drop off. But as far as coaching I think Gary Barnett has done an outstanding job the last several years. As you look at uh, Mike Hankwitz uh, who is the interim head coach and of course there have uh, there have been stories that have circulated uh, about recruits who had said that they gave commitments to come to Colorado that changed their mind with uh, with all the things that were going on. So. You know, in every direction that you look, be an administrator, a player, or a coach, you have had distraction after distraction, Bob. No question. And as good a coach as Gary Barnett is, as well respected as it is, it was probably time, in all honesty, to just move ahead. The president's gone, the athletic director's gone, and in reality, it was only a matter of time until the head coach was gone. And now it's time for Colorado to move forward. But I'm going to say this one last time. I've got a lot of respect for the job Gary Barnett has done over some adverse conditions the last couple of years. Couldn't agree more. Gary's a longtime friend, and we wish him well. Uh, I think it's time now for Colorado to get their ducks in order in a row and uh, say, hey, we're going to play college football. We're going to concentrate on this. We're going to get all of the, the groups that have been a pain in the side of a lot of people up there for a time and, and say, hey, we're going to play football and we're going to do the right thing and that's the way it's going to be. Leave us alone. You're right. And they should take advantage of it all and re-energize that entire program. But they need to go recruit some speed on this football team. Ron. First down from the 35 since the ball was kicked out of bounds. That's Lawrence Vickers number 17 235 pounds senior. They use him in a lot of different ways. A receiver also fullback H back David Dunham. On the tackle. Ron, it's so hard to play one dimensional on offense. I mean, you're Colorado against a really good defense here in Clemson. And Colorado right now can't throw the football. 
because James Cox is not very accurate, so they're up against it right now offensively. Second down, they need to take it to the 45. Play action, rolls it out, got this one complete, and Evans to Vickers, and Vickers is going to have the first down. Good second effort as he fights his way up around the 47 yard line. You mentioned Vickers, probably their best football player, and I think this is what James Cox does the best the naked boots, very little decision making. You can only really throw to one potential receiver. I think he's good on the move. And what helps Ron, Clemson's not a blitzing team. So there's not going to be someone, someone coming off the corner to blow that naked boot up. That's probably the best thing James Cox does right there. Yeah, Clemson likes to just bring those, that huge group of uh, down four up the field. And those, the two, the two defensive ends are outstanding. Adams and also Bennett. They'll keep it on the ground with a running play and a good job right there as Byron Ellis is knocked down by David Dunham as soon as he got the football. Holly Rowe, let's check with you on the sideline. Well, Coach Gary Burnett is the on, not the only coach who has had to go through some adversity. The assistant coaching staff now on month-to-month -month contracts due to Colorado State law now will be without employment. Now, the university has said that they will put together a package to guarantee at least two months, but the coaches say they have not seen anything yet in writing to guarantee that so all the coaches and their families really up in the air right now Dan Hawkins did meet with them and said he will evaluate who he will keep on the staff after he's done with his team at Boise State. OK Holly second down and 10 here comes pressure and we were just talking about those defensive ends Gaines Adams the junior out of Greenwood South Carolina boy you know the defensive coaches say we don't want him to be a robot he's got to play within himself but there's a good example he could freelance and do a lot of damage I tell you what Ron Gaines Adams number 93 right there on the sack you talk about a talented guy this guy runs four six he has tremendous instincts and I remember Jimmy Johnson used to say it let the dog eat what that means let that big guy just go because he has instincts to make plays. Well, that size, and he's 6'5", 265 with that kind of speed. Shovel pass. That uh, is not going to be a fumble, and the official signaling. Now, the guys dressed in orange are not going to like this, but it was a shovel pass. So it's incomplete, and it will bring up a fourth down situation. Adams and Bennett again, the two defensive ends, collapsed on the play and just fouled up the whole thing. So John Torp comes in and it has been the John Torp show in this first half. How about this Clemson defense. Old Bobby Bowden Steve Spurrier without a touchdown. Now half of this game run without a touchdown. Torp low pass. Here's his boot. It is another high hanging spiral not quite as long. Kelly ran into his own man and now it's going to be touched dead by Colorado at the 22 yard line. So here's tonight's at like trivia question. It was the only player for Clemson or Colorado to throw four TD passes in a bowl game. And here's a hint. See the ESPN college football encyclopedia section the bowls that answer coming up a little bit later on. E how long was that one 41 yards. Well. Far and away his uh, his least effort of the night. I won't say worst because he still is out kicking with his least effort. He's out kicking the Clemson effort. James Davis comes back into the lineup and tailback. And they'll give it to him. Not much doing up the middle as you see number 40, Brad Jones. In there at linebacker, redshirt freshman out of East Lansing, Michigan. Pretty simple to see, Ron. A lot of pressure on this Colorado defense because if Clemson gets up, I don't think Colorado can score a lot of points. So a lot of pressure on this Colorado defense now. Six to three to count right now. Clemson on top. Clock running down. We're under two minutes and 35 seconds left until intermission. Second down and seven. They need the 33. Here's Davis. Gets it to the outside. Going to have the first down plus about seven yards. Billingsley tripped him up, but it's a gain of 15. Whew. Quick feet. And they come with the lead draw. Steven Jackson, number 35, the fullback. Watch right here, Ron. 
the fullback with an excellent block. And James Davis springs it on second and long. Dante Harris in motion. Flag is down as the ball is given to Davis, and he's going to be tackled for no gain. Ron, is that the fourth offside penalty tonight, I think, on Colorado? I'm you're right. Yep. Offsides, number 86, defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. And let's check back at the studio. Reese Davis, what do you got for us? Well, Ron, coming up at halftime, Lou Holtz and Mark May alongside, as always. How do you stop Vince Young? The answer may be you can't. We'll examine it. Also, look at the turnaround for Rutgers as they get set for Arizona State tonight and how LSU will cope without Jamarcus Russell. You want to make sure you stay tuned at halftime as we discuss some of the key ingredients necessary to turn in the program around. I've got a game plan to slow down Vince Young. I want to know what Bob Davey would do if he had the game plan Vince Young and stop him in the Texas USC match. I'll do that right there, Bob. Put that free safety in the middle of the field and intercept that pass. You are Tyler right on cue with Henderson that. is the man who comes up with the interception. And you can see that uh, Tommy Bowden is, is not real happy. And you, you, you can't blame him. Wow. And I tell you what, Colorado desperately needs to take advantage of this. Charlie Whitehurst, the senior quarterback, Ron, just launches that football down the middle of the field. And a big interception. You see Tyrone Henderson just playing center field. I mean, Charlie threw that run off his back foot. Didn't look like he even stepped into that throw, did it? No, it didn't. Now, keep one thing in mind. We've got 147 showing on the clock. The line of scrimmage is the 49. Bob, they literally could pick up about 10 yards, let's say 12 or 13 optimum, and they're within his range. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and that's the thing about having a weapon that, like Crosby. Colorado needs to find these big tight ends, Ron. Get them involved in the passing game. They roll the pocket, pressure coming on, and he's going to be knocked down after a gain of one. Bennett makes still another tackle. And run. <laughs> I tell you what, this Clemson defense can run now. As you see, Bennett, the backside defensive end, just track that thing down. One timeout left for Colorado. Swings the ball out, and he threw that much too low. Hugh Charles, the intended receiver, right into the ground and stops the clock 116 until halftime. Ron, I'll tell you what, athletically, this is a mismatch right now in this football game. And for Colorado, they're going to have to throw the ball, some play action, some naked. But right now, they are being manhandled. So third down, nine yards. They need to take it to the 41-yard line. Keep your eye on that front four of Clemson. They are going to be coming off that ball. Probably going to run a twist stunt right now. Patrick Williams to the bottom of your screen, number four. Back in the pocket. Ball is given off in a running play, and there's just nothing there. Hugh Charles stopped at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down, and they still need nine. And they are now, regardless of what a cannon Mason Crosby has, uh, they're out of field goal range. So a timeout is called and we'll take it with them. 67 seconds left till halftime. Three point lead, Clemson. Well, our aerial coverage is courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, reminding you to enjoy the drive on Goodyear's Assurance Tires. Marty Chandler, the pilot, and the camera run by James Wilson. Torp stands back to punt. Waiting at the 35 yard line. Ron, it is a beautiful night here in Orlando, though, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's perfect. And after temperatures of the 30s last night, temperature in the 40s this evening, really wonderful football weather. Here's the boot. Tries to let up on this one. Same thing that happens when you have an easy swing and go. He just rocketed off his foot, and his touch are caught at the nine yard line. So 41 yards on the punt. Well, the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question, who's the only player for Clemson or Colorado to throw four TD passes in a bowl game? 
And that would be Woody Dantzler of Clemson. The 2001 Humanitarian Bowl against Louisiana Tech. So if you said Woody Dantzler, you're right on. Bit of a surprise, wasn't it? Yeah, because I didn't remember him throwing that yeah. much. Quarterback runs. Yeah. So James Davis in the ball game at tailback. You got 60 seconds exactly showing on the clock. And they give it to Davis. Goes right up the middle and slides down. Davis into the center. Ron, if you're Clemson right here, just run this football. Don't punt this football. Colorado only with one timeout left. Before the snap, false start. Number five, offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Please reset the game clock to one minute. Frustration on Tommy Bowden's face, outgaining Colorado 202 to 34 total yards, but only a 6 3 game. First and 15. James Davis again is the man at tailback, and they got one minute to try to run off the clock or do something with it, and Davis is going to go for close to four yards. Baca Manapuna comes over to make the stop. Baca has had a, a good first half. Hoping that he is, that he will have a good uh, a good bowl game, all-star game out in Hawaii. Kind of an ugly game, Ron, if you're honest, and that is Colorado's best chance. Oh, it is. To win this game. Now, I don't think there's any question about that. 30 seconds showing on the clock. And uh, Clemson looking up. Charlie Whitehurst says, well, we've got uh, four seconds here on the play clock. Let's run it one more time and then head to the locker room. And Davis back into the boundary will go down. He'll stay in the field of play. And that'll be the last play as Washington is over there to make the tackle. The last play of the first half. Here's Washington on the start. So it's 6 3 Clemson on top. And let's go down to the sideline. And Holly Rowe is with uh, Coach Bout. Well, guys, we're just waiting for Coach Bowden to come off right now. But while we're waiting, let me give you a quick injury update for Clemson. Two of their top receivers out right now. They'll reevaluate them at halftime Curtis Bayham and Chancey Stuckey, one with a neck injury, one with a hip injury. But now with Coach Bowden. Coach, tell us a little bit. I was kidding yesterday when I said maybe we should have a kickoff with these two great kickers. But what do you have to do to get your offense rolling? Well, you know, I've been hurt by field position the first half. It's really made it op difficult to operate back there. But, you know, we've taken one long drive. And just, you know, we need to get some touchdowns instead of field goals. But uh, Colorado's playing real well, which I thought they would. All right. And defensively, they have been able to move the little ball a little bit but not get into the end zone. What do you like to see continue there? Well, defensively, you know, they're rather than we're giving the ball 29, they got a field goal. Defensively, I don't think we could play much better. All right. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Holly, thanks so much. Our halftime score, Clemson 6 and Colorado 3. Now, let's join Reese Davis in the studio. And I want to know who's watering all those flowers. week continues here from Orlando Florida and you take a look at the stats in the first half and uh, whoa they are not very pretty. You are exactly right as you look at those stats I mean 207 yards to 34 if you're Clemson you had some bad breaks and had some things go against you they had a screen pass called back that was a touchdown then instead of going for it on the one yard line they settled for the field goal to make it 6 3 if you're Colorado. You are hanging by a thread right well, now. Bob, you got 26 snaps of the football and you only have 34 yards. And I wonder, you know, Brian White is way down the list, but you're not going to lose anything more than what you got with James Cox, it would appear to me. Yeah, I agree. I mean, James Cox started one game last year at Iowa State. He was pulled after an interception, I believe, in the first half. He was one for eight against Texas in the championship game. He's two for ten tonight. I doubt that the teammates and coaches have a lot of confidence in him. I would give Brian White a shot. Easy to say. I mean, I don't know enough about the situation, but looking at it as an outsider, I'm like you. You've got nothing to lose. Well, Turn this young guy loose. We, what we're playing for, we're talking about uh, tomorrow. <laughs> oh, 
Brian White, a sophomore out of Mission Viejo, California. As you look at uh, Coach Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator for the Colorado Buffaloes, and the interim head coach for this ball game here tonight. Crosby prepares to kick it off. Aaron Kelly, one of the deep men, along with the Grisham. And here's the boot. This one is returnable. High spinner. Going to be taken at the eight. And that's Grisham. Far sideline. Ran it to his own man as he crosses the 30. And a game track. This is what happened in the first day. Charlie Whitehurst, 12 of 19, 133 yards, and an interception. And for Cox, 26 yards on 2 of 10. And here's been the weapon right here. Torque, 6 months, 51 yards, his longest, 68. So Whitehurst will give it to Davis on a little counter play. Whoa, he, he gets whacked down hard after a gain of five. Brian Ewu. Came in to put the shoulder pads on him. Ron, we talked about James Davis, the true freshman from Atlanta Douglas High School. Came to Clemson in August, left, packed his bags and went home. Said there wasn't any eye formation. He wanted to run out of the eye. He wasn't homesick. He just didn't like the offense. But Tommy Bowden, the second best recruiting job, getting him to come back. The first one, get him to sign. He's been problem uh, with a wrist this year as this handoff is going to go for big 40 30 finally caught knocked out of bounds lost possession of the ball but it was in his possession when he went out Billingsley will get credit for a tackle after a 46 yard game and really good block by the two fries you see the left guard Roman Fry in the center Dustin Fry Ron that was excellent blocking by the center and the guard young guy better protect the football but great block at the line of scrimmage by the left guard Roman Fry Roman Fry sang yesterday with the Blues Brothers at the house of the Blues in the <laughs> Disney, World. Disney World I should say and uh, he, they got him up on stage, and his uh, teammates got a big kick out of that. He's in Ironton, Ohio. Going to keep it on the ground, runs into his own blocker. That's Reggie Merriweather, tackled by Dizon. Tell you what, Roman Fry, you talk about the Blues brothers. He put some blues on James Gary. 82, the defensive tackle run on that last play. Watch this block right there. He engulfs James Gary. Well, Roman, it was it was the luncheon that uh, they have a brunch for both teams. Starts early, which I think is a great idea. Then they have an opportunity to walk through. But he got up and uh, said, yeah, he would get up there. They called him to the stage. <laughs> Good sense of humor. I'll tell you, we've been to a bunch of bowls. This Champ Sports Bowl is an up-and-coming bowl. Doesn't hurt that you have it in Orlando, Florida. A great destination for these players and these coaches and the fans. Yeah, the, the kids really had a good time at that, at that luncheon yesterday because it's uh, really something totally different. Instead of the, uh, the formal kind of setting with two or three tier table. And we listen to the blues music. Whitehurst, quick look in pass, beautifully thrown, complete. Aaron Kelly inside the 10 yard line, and it's first and goal, Clemson. Again, Aaron Kelly, the freshman receiver on Garrett Burrow, the corner. Easy throw and catch and run right here. This Colorado defense has to dig down, hold Clemson to a field goal attempt right here in this football game. Uh, it's looking to me like the way Clemson's playing that Rob Spence and the head coach Tommy Bowden uh, did some whispering at halftime. And off Davis hit behind the line of scrimmage and is going to be stopped at around the six yard line by Maurice Lucas. And they love talking about Colorado Maurice Lucas a true freshman run. He's only 240 pounds but he plays a lot stronger. Actually committed to Kansas State late in recruiting, but they were able to get him to Boulder. It's got to make Dan Hopkins after a true freshman defensive lineman. Yeah, for sure. The, the biggest comment on him is just a really big upside. Thomas Hunter in motion. 
in play action. Got a man open back of the end zone, and he threw it to the man. Did he catch it inbounds? No. And he had a man, the tight end, was it down or a hunter, wide open in the base of the end zone. I mean, he looks like the first guy out to the workout. You're exactly right. They come with the naked boot, Charlie Whitehurst. And you see downer, the tight end right there. And the other tight end you're referring to is back. Thomas Hunter. Across the grain, Thomas Hunter. Boy, that's going to, that obviously, as all calls are reviewable, the question I have was that left knee out of bounds when he caught the football, which I think that left knee, Ron, was on that white line. And I do not think this call will be reversed right here. No, I, I agree with you. Uh, the official was standing right there and looked as though that he had a clear view of uh, the knee sliding out. The wide receiver is back here around the tiger paw. <laughs> That left knee run is on that white line. Yeah. Yeah, that's no catch. Excellent call right there by the official. Yeah, they don't All right, miss now, many. Now watch over the middle. Look at 89. Yeah. Look at Thomas. Yeah, we Thomas see. Hunter, and he's saying, throw the ball to me. Don't throw it to the guy going out of bounds. After review, the receiver possessed the pass, touched to the ground. Out of bounds, incomplete pass. Touchdown. It's a good call. It is. These guys do a great job week in and week out, don't they? And he's a gentleman here tonight from the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, they, they've had a couple of close situations and they have made the right call. You know, one thing instant replay has done, it's legitimized. Just how good college officiating <laughs> is over right. the years. I mean, you're right. All right, here comes the shift. It is third down. See if they can put it in the end zone, or they have to go for still another field goal. Whitehurst looking, looking, going to scramble, and he'll score. Ewu looked as though he had a good shot at him and couldn't bring him down. Pretty good speed for a six foot five inch quarterback. Akarika Don right there. The linebacker had a shot. Man, Ron, that was huge on third down and about six right there. I could bet you Tommy Bowden did not want to call on Jad Dean to kick anything but an extra point. He didn't want him out there kicking a field goal. Here comes the try, good pass, and he knocks it home. So with 11.45 left in the third quarter, our new score is Clemson 13 and Colorado 3. Charlie Whitehurst takes it to Painter. So welcome back to Orlando. Look at some of the festivities going on right here with the bands. Really nice halftime show and fireworks. 13 to 3. The Clemson Tigers, after a drive of eight plays, 67 yards, just over three minutes used off the clock. And it was the quarterback, Whitehurst, on the five yard run for the touchdown. Stephen Furr to kick it off. And returnable from the five. This is Robinson. Robinson. Whoa, he was about one step, Bob, from bouncing that thing back into the middle. And let's go down the sidelines. Holly Rowe. Hey guys, I caught up with Coach Mike Hinkwitz at the half, and he told me that for Colorado, the key to them right now in the second half is for their quarterback to settle down. He said right now, James Cox has been nervous. He hasn't been getting the ball to the receivers, and he's really been pressing. They need him to relax and complete some passes. He also said the running backs are not being patient enough, not running it up in there. They're trying to do too much themselves and not running behind their offensive line. Two of 10, 26 yards as you look at Mike Hankwitz. And they'll keep this one on the ground, and then the head goes down. Hugh Charles straight ahead, right into the arms of Gaines Adams. That's a junior defensive end who has been outstanding tonight, along with uh, his fellow bookend, Charles Bennett, number 86. It's Clemson defense, 13th in the nation in scoring defense, only gives up 18 points a game. Best at Clemson since 1995. Vic Coning has come in, Ron, and done a heck of a job his first year as defensive coordinator. I want to ask you a question. 
He's related to a family down in Texas. Spells it the same way, and it's called Caney. Now, what is that? Just parts of the world? I knew you were going to ask me that. I, <laughs> I don't have the answer because I want to call him Vic Koenig myself, but it's Vic Koenig. But he has done an excellent job. He was the head coach at Wyoming for two years. Then this past year, he was at Troy State for one year. Good football coach, a simple philosophy. Let him run to the football. Last year, Clemson played a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Gave up some big plays. This year, doing a zone team run. By the way, Les Kenny is uh, the offensive coordinator at, uh, at Texas A&M. And his father, a longtime outstanding high school coach in the uh, greater Houston area. Colorado 0 of 7 on third down conversion. Here comes the running play. Make it 0 of 8. I mean, there were white jerseys in the backfield. Charles Bennett, who is uh, one of the captains for tonight's game, along with Tremaine Billy, making the tackle. And I'll tell you what, Ron, this defensive line from Clemson, you look at Bennett, come underneath spill the football out to the linebacker but Bennett the defensive end and what a lick right there I think it was I, Billy. That was, I do it was Tremaine Billy yeah an undersized guy that's a great playmaker on defense well here comes the man who's been Mr. Show off tonight uh, John Torrey the senior out of Louisville so here's the left footers booth and as soon as we bragged on him he uh, it's a spiral that's not nearly as good as what he uh, has been doing. Still, it's not going to be bad. We will take a timeout. 9.26 remaining following that 42-yard punt. 13-3, Clemson. ESPN College Football, the Champ Sports Bowl, is brought to you by Champ Sports. Everything for the player and the fan. Champ Sports, where sport lives and Mercury and your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. Well, our aerial coverage is courtesy of Goodyear, who would uh, like to extend their best wishes for the holidays and remind you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's Assurance Tires. You're looking at pilot Marty Chandler. Look at that shot down at the stadium. Wave, Marty. Wave to us. Can you tell us hi? <laughs> hey, no, don't take your hand off the wheel. The wheel. Never mind. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's a great shot. Now, but, now he got his head back on the wheel. That's good. Beautiful shots. Great night for shooting. Davis loses his footing, but he's still going to have about three yards of the play. Akarika, uh, Akarika Dawn, the senior, makes the tackle. Huge series for this Colorado defense, Ron, because you had the feeling come in, if they could stay close, they'd compete, they'd keep playing, but they are so fragile because of the late season blowouts and all the issues between the Texas game and now, you get the feeling that they really, really need to stop Clemson right now to stay in this game. Whitehurst rolls the pocket, throws it complete, and that's Bayham. And glad to see him back in the ball game. He was one of the two wide receivers shaken up in the first half. Stucky, I believe, got uh, hit in the head. And I don't know if we're going to see him in the uh, second half or not. They say no. Okay. The Cole Downer comes in at tight end. Excuse me. There's a look at uh, number two, Chancey Stucky. Leading receiver in the ACC. So, High cotton right there, 62 receptions, 761 yards. Davis not going to have the first down. Nice work by the Colorado defense, and it's going to be fourth down. Ewu making the individual tackle. Big stop right there by Colorado's defense, and again, the Achilles heel of this Clemson football team, Ron, punting the football. Well, just keep an eye, particularly on number 21. That's uh, Vance Washington, who got a hand on one earlier. And he comes flying off the edge. And it looks as though now that uh, Clemson has put a couple of folks out there to uh, slow him down a little bit. Yep, they have. And still, it's a miserable punt. One bouncer going to be taken at the 35, 40, 45. Oh. Ball is loose. Fumbled and. Well, officials say it's going to stay where it is. 
It'll stay with the Buffaloes. So let's take a timeout. 40 yards in the kick and 12 on the return. 13 to 3. Clemson leads. Clemson leads it 13 to 3. And a reminder tomorrow, Capital One Bowl Week continues. Coverage begins with a College Game Day Bowl special presented by Outback Steakhouse at 4 Eastern. And at 4.30 Eastern, Boise State meets Boston College on the famed Blue Turf and the MPC Computers Bowl. Then at 8 o'clock, Michigan taking on Nebraska at the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. Both games are part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and are also available in ESPN HD. Run Colorado, two NFL potential tight ends, both seniors, 89 Kloppenstein, 45 Sipnuski. Get those tight ends an opportunity to make some plays. Fakes it, hit behind the line of scrimmage, and it is Gaines Adams. Twice that they have sacked the quarterback. Boy. 4 6 40 gains Adams just runs up the field run that's tough on any quarterback right there as they tried to come with the naked boot on first and ten but these ends from Clemson ends from Clemson are always up the field anyhow total plays 30 yards per play one Second down and 22. They got to take it all the way to the 41 yard line. And movement by Sipnuski. One of the tight ends Bob was just talking about. Maybe they had told him they were going to finally throw him a pass. And he got anxious. Full snap, full start. Number 76 and 45 offense. Five yard penalty. Still run. second down. The confidence level, obviously, of this Colorado offensive football team. Three points against Nebraska, three points against Texas, and then your most valuable player that the teammates voted the most valuable player, Joel Klatch, your starting quarterback, out of the game. Virtually no confidence right now in this offense. And on the other side of the coin, the, uh, the defense for Colorado they really have played a good football game and they've got to be getting frustrated by the lack of offense of the offensive unit. Second down short drop right over the middle got it complete and throwing to one of those tight ends and this time Kloppenstein. And Ron that would have been a great call obviously on first and ten right there but Kloppenstein he is an NFL prospect. Without any doubt, 6'6, 245. They've clocked him in 455. Actually, the fifth fastest guy on the team. He's going to play in the senior bowl. Been hurt late in the season, hurt his productivity. He got a sting around his shoulder, and it did uh, cut down his uh, productivity. Third down. Try to set the screen, throw a complete hit behind the line after the ball is caught. Hugh Charles is just eaten up by C.J. Gaddis. Hey, this is a brand new Clemson football team here in the second half. They didn't play with this kind of emotion in the first half. I tell you what, get ready next season if you're on that Clemson schedule because this is a fast, fast, talented young defensive team. I mean, they fly to the football run. John Torp stands back to kick. His eighth punt of the night. Aaron Kelly, the deep man. And here's the left footer's boot. Not going to turn this spiral over. Kelly on the run lost the ball and then slid out of bounds when he regained possession. So we'll take a timeout. 13 to 3 Clemson, 435 left in the third quarter. So we are back, 435 remaining, third quarter. 10 point lead Clemson. Take it to Davis. Pass thrown out in the flat, and that's good to Grisham. He's Grisham a lot tonight. He's going to wind up with about four, maybe five yards on the play. Grisham, a true freshman 
But how about Clemson? Seven different uniform combinations since Tommy Bowden's been head coach. They've had six different combinations this year, Ron. And they're undefeated in the purple. Yeah, they saved the purple. <laughs> they're saving. They don't pull the purple out unless they really need it. Oh, well, look at the yards by half. Minus four. Colorado in the second half. 34 in the first half. So the total of 30. That's Harris in motion. Comes a blitz right up the middle. They went away from it. And Davis, he gets by that one tackler, which he does not. He'd still be running. Brian Ewu makes the stop after a gain of 11, but that blitz was coming angled away from where the play went. And he makes a great move on Lorenzo Sims right there, Ron. And good effort by Ewu, the linebacker, but wow. That's a great move on Lorenzo Sims, but good effort by Ewu of retracing his steps and making the play. 121 yards for James Davis tonight. Average of uh, just over six yards per try. First player to rush for over 100 yards against uh, Colorado this year. Short gainer on this one. Takes it for a couple, and it's Dawn on the tackle. And uh, Holly Rowe, let's check back with you down on the sideline. Well, James Davis is just a true freshman, but guys, he's been very productive, particularly tonight. For good reason, he has summer training with Jamal Lewis of the Ravens. They both went to the same high school, Atlanta's Douglas High School. And uh, he said that he and Ahmad Carroll, cornerback from the uh, Packers, get together during the summer and work out. He said it's been a great help because Jamal Lewis has taught him how hard he has to work to be a running back at this level. And he also has taught him how to lift weights and take care of his body. So James Davis getting some extra help from a pretty good running back, Jamal Lewis. You know, Holly, 729 yards for him this year. That is the second most rushing yards ever by a Clemson Tiger uh, in the history of the school. Well, that screen pass got it complete, but as soon as he caught it, Rendrick Taylor, uh, he is going to be tackled. Right now, let's check with Reese Davis for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Reese. All right, Ron. Funeral services were held in Florida today for James Dungy, the 18 year old son of Colts head coach Tony Dungy, who was found dead last week in his apartment of an apparent suicide. Dozens of members from the NFL community, including the Colts team, were there to attend the two hour service. Sports Center after the Insight Bowl, ESPN News, all the time. Okay, Reese, thanks very much. Clock about to go under two minutes to play in third quarter. Pressure coming off the corner, and Whitehurst going to be sacked. They get him back at the 48 yard line, and it's uh, Alex Legon who was there. Second time that they've gotten to Whitehurst this season. You feel good for Alex Legon, Ron. He started last year, was beat out this year, actually had a knee injury and an excellent pass rush. You see the little twist stunt right there, the underneath move. Abraham right up the field. Forced the quarterback to step up and let gone right there for the sack. So that means Cole chasing in the punt. Fourth time that he would have kicked tonight. Pressure coming right up the middle. Flag is down. I think that's going to be Colorado offsides. And now this one is going to take a big Clemson roll and be touched dead at the six yard line. And you have to think Clemson obviously will decline this penalty, Ron, because it was fourth down and 11. 45 yards on the kick. Far and away their best boot of the night. Kyle Griffith is a man who had a shot at it, but it may Outside, have been. Number 32, defense. The penalties decline. First down, Colorado. So Cantrell is a man who was offside. Here we are in uh, Orlando, Florida at the Champs Sports Bowl. Clemson, number 23 in the country, taking on Colorado, winners of the Big 12 North. Whitehurst, 16 of 24, 160, one interception. And you see the total yards, Clemson 301, Colorado 30. Worst field position start of the night by Colorado. If things aren't tough enough. This is all Clemson crowd here, and they're making some noise in that end zone right now. Sprague in motion to the top of your screen. But they'll hand it off straight away, and it'll be a gain of about four. That's Byron Ellis, sophomore out of Culver City, California. 
run. You kind of like the fact that Colorado now playing with a fullback running the football north and south. I know they're backed up right now, but their best opportunity to run the ball is right at the Clemson defense. Using uh, the benefit of the lead blocker. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. It is second down and they need about six. And they'll go for the running play again by Ellis and he's tripped up short of the first down. It's going to be third down and two. Rashad Jackson is over to make the tackle. Byron Ellis, Byron Ellis a little bit of a slasher. Didn't he run a little different style? Yeah. Than you, Charles. First team academic all big 12. 4.0 student in high school. Byron Ellis. Well, that's going to be the final play of the third quarter as Colorado is going to start walking toward the other end of the field. And there it is. Let's head to the final 15 minutes with our score. Clemson 13 and Colorado 3. Welcome back to the ESPN's coverage of the Champ Sports Bowl. I'm Ron Franklin. Along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe from Orlando, Florida. And our score, 13 to 3, the Clemson Tigers. 3 3 and 7, 0 3 and 0 for the Colorado Buffaloes as far as the scoring by quarters. Third down, Colorado. They need to get off the snide here. They've only converted one, and they just did. Straight ahead with the fullback, and it's Lawrence Vickers, and he'll have the Buffalo first down. They're now 1 of 10 on the evening. Got to start somewhere. And they're still not down that badly. You feel a little bit better about the I formation attack. Lead blocker in the game. As they're going to measure right here, I believe, Ron. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we, uh, we were talking about these, uh, these gentlemen officiating the game tonight are from the Sunbelt Conference. And I think they've done a really good job. They are one of the conferences that did not have instant replay uh, during the regular season. And they've made some good, tough, close calls tonight. Stretch it out, and there's your first down. The initial third down conversion by Colorado. Right now, if you're Colorado, what is the safest, most high percentage throw that James Cox can make? I don't think you can naked boot because the ends get up the field, but Ron, you have to throw and catch the ball and get some kind of confidence in the passing game. It has to be one of those big tight ends hooking up yep. right over the ball, doesn't it? Yep. Safety creeping up. Ball is fumbled on the snap. They never even got to run the play. Hard to tell. Looked like the quarterback pulled away just a little bit. It's Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, up in the press box. Tough on these assistant coaches. Ron, obviously, most of them high percentage will not be retained on the next coaching staff that comes in. Second down at 11. Heavy pressure, and he's going to be sacked again. This time back at the seven yard line. Third time that they've gotten to James Cox. Rashad Jackson is the man who led the way. Gaines Adams is the man who really see the pressure coming from him. And then number 91 makes the leap. And that's when Rashad Jackson made the tackle. And I'll tell you what, Gaines Adams just blew up Lawrence Vickers, the fullback. That's tough now to put the fullback on your best pass rusher, Gaines Adams. But, man, that was a flood right there, the way Clemson attacked that quarterback. Third down. Can they make it two conversions in a row? They're going to call a timeout. Because they've still got to take the ball out to the 26-yard line. We're coming up. We'll talk with new Colorado head coach Dan Hawkins. That's next. Stay with us.
So here's the situation 13 to 3 with 13 07 left to play in our ball game and Colorado who's one of 10 of third down conversions tonight trying to take the football out to the 26 and a half yard line to keep this drive going. Hugh Charles. Lawrence Vickers, I beg your pardon, number 17 lined up is uh, the lone setback. And it is going to be punny time for Colorado. Well, as promised, the new head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes, Dan Hawkins, uh, joining us uh, from uh, up in Boise. Dan, uh, as you just told us when we got you on the line here, you're juggling a lot of activities right now because you've got a bowl game to coach tomorrow night. Yeah, we're uh, actively involved in that and uh, trying to get our Boise State Broncos ready to go against a very tough Boston College team uh, for tomorrow. Dan, when uh, was it totally your decision or did when you decided to take the job as far as staying at Boise to coach this final game? Well, it was kind of a unified deal between our AD and you know our coaches and our team, and so we wanted to finish the thing out. And, uh, We've been through a lot together here, and I'd always try to get our guys to finish what they start, and that's what we want to do, too. Dan, you've been approached by a lot of people in recent years because your record has been truly outstanding at Boise, and a lot of folks have taken a look at you. Why all of a sudden Colorado? What to you made this program the thing was the, the one that you wanted to grab? Well, I just think it was a great fit. Uh, Boulder is a great place to live. It's a great place for my family. It's an outstanding academic institution, and, and it has great tradition, obviously, with a national championship under its belt. And, uh, you know, the Big 12 being a great conference, I just thought it was a, a great fit for myself and my family. Hey, Dan, this is Bob Davey. Uh, you know, no secret, there's a lot of off-the-field issues over the last several years with the team. The reputation's been tarnished in some circles. You know, how do you address that with the team? I mean, what's the first thing you're going to talk to those guys about? Well, I just think we have to get in there and just do things right, Coach, and you know that, and I'm not really going to assume what did or didn't go on, and you know, we're going to start with a clean slate, do things our way, and you know, I'm all about class and pride and dignity and doing things right. Uh, we're going to jump in there, roll up our sleeves, and get this thing going. Dan, how about recruiting? It, it's, I'm sure it's very difficult having just taken the job you got your own bowl game. They're down here playing. It, it, you know, what's it look like early on here? Well, you know, we're going to have to run fast and furious and we're ready to get back out on the road next week. And, uh, you know, we'll see. The uh, guys that have been there put together a pretty good list for us, and we kind of know what's out there and who they've offered. And, and uh, we've had a lot of guys commit. They're very excited about us coming on board and what Colorado has to offer as a university and a city. And so, uh, but we're a little bit behind, but hey, uh, no hill for a climber. Dan, can you explain uh, some of the re specific recruiting restrictions uh, that have been in place at Colorado for the last couple years and and and, uh, and how you're going to deal with those? Well, you know, Coach, there, there really isn't. You know, Gary opted to go with a 36-hour uh, rule with a visit. But you can go 48, which we'll go to. We'll go to the 48-hour rule. Uh, they do have a curfew on the guys. But, you know, here at Boise State, we have a curfew on the guys as well. So... Uh, I don't know if that's any big, but there really aren't, you know, a, a bunch of other limitations that, that most of the other universities in the country deal with. Charlie Whitehurst sacked on that play right there. Uh, Coach, before we let you go, one other quick question. Uh, when you, you know, as I said, you come from the mountain country, uh, you know, did, was that another thing, being in that part of the world and understanding high school football and, and what have you, and, and just the parameters as a whole, was that another thing that really helped you make up your mind? Well, I think the, obviously the community of Boulder is very intriguing and, uh, you know, similar to Boyce in terms of that nature, and that made it a good fit for my family. But, uh, oh gosh, I think in Colorado you can probably recruit nationally and done a great job in Texas and out west in California, which we're very strong in. And, uh, but I just thought there were a lot of national ties for myself and my family. Okay. Dan, we'll let you go. We know that you got more on your plate, and you can say grace over right now, young man. So, I, and I can tell you, we've seen BC a couple of times this year. That is a rugged ball club that you're playing tomorrow night, and good luck in that game. Guys, thanks a lot. Dan Hawkins, the new head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes, preparing to coach his ball club in their final game tomorrow night our final game for him is their head coach and Ron I think Brian White the quarterback for Colorado may be coming in the football game here on this next offensive series for Colorado 
Jason prepares to punt. Okay, they've been close all night. Driving spiral caught and on the run is Robinson, and Robinson's going to take it out to the 31-yard line. So we got a new quarterback checking into the ball game, and as Bob said, it's a situation where actually he was the number three as of just about three weeks ago. So it's hard to to know a great deal about this young man out of Mission Viejo, California. And Ron, I think he's only played in one or two series all year. They're not going to redshirt him. And they really do think this young guy could be the future quarterback at Colorado. From what I understand, he can really throw the football. Tough night right there for James Cox against a really good Clemson defense. Yep. Brian White, by the way, his dimension, 6'5, 235. And they're going to roll the pocket. Got a man wide open, and the ball is. There come flags. It's going to be pass interference as Evan Judd was the man who got way behind the defense, and the ball was hung a little too high in the air, <laughs> giving the defenders an opportunity to run under it. You're right, Ron. I mean, Evan Judge was open right here, but the ball hangs up in the air, and the interference on Ty Hill, the All-American cornerback from Clemson. But, I mean, that ball was up in the air a long time, clearly pass interference. Yeah, Judge, he looked around him himself and said, wait a minute, I've outrun everybody here. Yeah. Give me the football quickly. And Charles almost hit the blimp. He put so much <laughs> air under that ball. I thought it was one of John Torp's punts. Your regular starting quarterback, five on the sideline, now helping call offensive plays. First down. Ball is fumbled as he goes into the line. That's Lawrence Vickers. And the officials are saying. No, they're not saying anything so far. They want to make sure they get it just right. Well, the signal comes that it is second down. So the ball is not turned over. Bean bag is picked up. And let's watch this exchange right here, Ron. Nah, that's on the running back right there. I mean, it really was never a pocket. Lawrence Vickers, the running back, in my opinion, right there. Lawrence Vickers looking ahead, obviously, the defensive line, but there was no pocket there. There was Closed no place up. to put the ball. Yeah. Closed it up. And it, uh, they're fortunate they didn't wind up with the turnover. Well, and they've had some breaks tonight, Colorado, just inept on offense not able to take advantage of any opportunities they've had Hugh Charles in the ball gave a tail back but they're going to throw it Brian White steps up right over the middle got him open and that is Sipniski the tight end and just like that it is a first and ten Colorado good job of the offensive front of blocking that's a longest game of the night 26 yards. I'm sorry Ron Sipniski the tight end the sixth year tight end wide open right down the seam but a good job by Brian White of not holding on to that football. He got rid of the football in enough time before Clemson's defense could recover and you know this is only a 13 three yep. ball game right here. Clemson showing blitz and they bring a couple of players pass got it right over the middle 12 yard line and down to the nine is Patrick William the red shirt freshman out of DeSoto Texas and folks it is a first and goal for the Colorado Buffalo and I'll tell you what Patrick excuse me Brian White the quarterback run he didn't have enough time to be nervous for this football game. James Cox knew he was going to be the guy, had the weight of the world on his shoulders. He's, this guy comes off the bench and just heats it up right here. He's already picked up more yards in this sequence than they had the entire ball game in three quarters, Bob. He can throw it now. I mean, he has a strong arm. First and goal. And you could see the judge stood up and called a timeout. And obviously he saw the play clock going down under five. Let's take a timeout. Colorado threatening. ESPN College Football, the Champ Sports Bowl.
is brought to you by Champ Sports. Everything for the player and the fan. Champ Sports, where sport lives. And in part by the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Now through January 3rd. So welcome back. And I'll tell you, you know, Brian White is coming to the ball game at quarterback, and he has got more noise going on in the stadium right now than we have heard since the teams took the field. It is first and goal, Colorado. Hands it off for the running play. They'll take it to the left side, down close to the five yard line is Hugh Charles. McKissick making the tackle. And Ron Dan Hawkins. Has to be a little bit excited right now sitting in his office out there in Boise watching Brian White, a 6'5, 235 pound quarterback. It's a pretty good audition for Brian White in front of the new head coach, isn't it? And, you know, not only that, like you said, you made the point. He didn't really have time to get yeah. nervous over this thing, but he is showing a lot of poise, and that's, you know, so doggone important. And doesn't it help to complete your first pass? Yeah. You know, just get some momentum going, some positive energy. Oppenstein in motion. They're going to go with a running play right up the middle, and he'll take it down inside the three. Nick Watkins making still another tackle tonight. Nick has had a really good ball game. Carried by Hugh Charles. Ron, it's third down and two. I think you go for it. I think this is two down territory right here. If I'm Mike Hankowitz in Colorado. But they're going to have to hurry here because that play clock is already down to 13 and they have yet to break the huddle. It's under 10. It's at 8, four, 7. Said, don't get a penalty, whatever you do, don't get a penalty. Three seconds, down to two, down to one, and they finally they call the timeout. And Ron, one thing about this Colorado team, they are the second most highly penalized team in college football this year with 10 penalties a game 90 yards a game and they're just not explosive enough or talent enough to be a highly penalized football team. Well tomorrow Capital One Bowl week continues 430 Eastern Boise State meets Boston College on the famed blue turf and the MPC Computers Bowl then at eight o'clock. Michigan, the Wolverines taking on Nebraska in the MasterCard Alamo Bowl down in San Antonio. Both games are part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and also are available on ESPN HD. And a new head coach at Colorado? I wasn't I wasn't uh, blowing smoke in the, I'm just telling him. They better be ready for a hard yeah. battle tomorrow night. That is a oh, good right. Boston College football team. And they'll hit you and keep on hitting you. And one thing the new head coach at Colorado, he's going to leave that home field bowl advantage behind <laughs> yeah. when he leaves Boise because they're not going to play a bowl game in Boulder. So enjoy that one tomorrow night. Our situation here, third down, and the ball is two and one half yards away from the goal line. Vickers is the fullback. Hugh Charles is the tailback. Brian White under center. Rolls the pocket. Got a man in the back of the end zone. Throws it wide open. Touchdown, Colorado Sipnutsky. And there is a flag down in the end zone. You're right, Bob. I think that may be defensive holding. And a great call by Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, Ron. The old tight end hide play. Holding, number 25, defense. The penalty is defined. Touchdown. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're an extra point away from having a three-point ball game. Ron, watch right here, Sapnuski, the tight end. He's going to hide a little bit, act like he's blocking, full sprint, then he releases against a fast-pursuing Clemson defense, and he is wide open. And our guy, Brian White's three for three, right? At yeah. least. And you know what, Bob? He had a guy open on the other side of the end zone as well. Extra point attempt by Mason. Crosby is up and it is good and look at some excitement on the field by the Colorado Buffaloes there is a marker down at the one foot line as you take one more look at the touchdown to Sipnuski.
After the play, personal foul, number 58, offense. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Wow. The try is good. Timeout. So we'll take a timeout. 545 left in the ballgame at our new score, Clemson 13, Colorado 10. So looking down on the sideline, White receiving the congratulations from his teammates. For the first 10 drives of the ball game, no touchdowns, 36 yards. The last drive, 69 yards and a touchdown. That's the first offensive TD in 220 minutes for the Colorado Buffaloes. Here's the kick by Crosby. Very high and a spinner to the 25. And Kelly is going to take it back to the 40 yard line. Right now, let's go to Phoenix and get a preview of the inside bowl. Here is Brett Musburger. Brett. With Gary Daniels, and I'm Brett Musburger. Gary, coming up next, Rutgers in his first bowl game in 27 years. Intensity and power, that's what they're going to bring. Arizona State is favored, but Rutgers has come to play. Now, let's go back to Ron Franklin. All right, Brett. Gary, we look forward to. Uh, Get you back to the hotel and see your ball game and see if uh, the Scarlet Knights can step forward and make a little dent in the bowl scene as it's been a while. Colorado showing blitz and they're going to be offsides in the play. Whitehurst spreading out to the right. And now it's just going to slide down at the 40 yard line. Ron Colorado heavily penalized all year as a team and it continues tonight. With the personal foul on the extra point and now the offsides penalty on first and ten. Interesting thing here though, Charlie could see they were offside. Why not just go ahead and throw it? Exactly. And some offenses build that into their system. Yeah. Where they just throw the ball deep because you have Offside, nothing to lose. Number 93, defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Puna, I think that's the third time that uh, he has been flagged tonight. Interesting Clemson's offensive line you notice here Ron, never gets in a three point stance. They're always in a two point stance. Never get down with their hand on the ground. Which is a little unique. So the clock now becomes huge. Whitehurst going to hold on to the football and on the keeper he will have the first down as he takes it across midfield and is down at the 49 by Washington. And you see exactly what Tommy Bowden is saying. Just keep on looking at the clock. Be smart. Use every second on the play clock. And Charlie Whitehurst, a la Woody Danzler, on the quarterback, the side play. I tell you, he runs good for a big six five. Yeah, he guy. does. He does. And physically, he's uh, he's a good looking kid. He's a, a big boy for a quarterback. Ran it all the way down to two seconds that time, and here comes Davis. And Davis is going to have a gain of very close to eight yards on that first down carry. Now that is kind of like a dagger right there, because if you play that far in front of the chains, Clemson is going to be able to run this clock all the way out unless you close the door here quickly. Exactly. And you saw Mike Hankwitz that time blitzed, uncharacteristic of Colorado, but they feel like they're behind field position wise because of the big penalty run on the on the extra point so yeah. he's panicking just a little bit trying to make something happen Davis would mention the only running back to go over 100 yards against Colorado this year he's now at 132 on 24 attempts and he'll get it again not going to have the first down he'll be short by about a yard and a half Ron, I think the country getting a chance to see James Davis tonight, really for the first time. True freshman running back out of Atlanta, about 730 yards on the season. This guy is going to be a big time player if he can stay healthy. The biggest thing he has, game breaking speed. But I tell you what, this guy wears number one and backs it up. Yeah, he does. And it, you could see in that one run, about three or four. Uh, before the end there just the dead leg that he gave the defender and the tackler just missed as he went by here's third down they need the 38 and a half yard line and they got it 
Thrown right over the middle, complete to Kelly. And Aaron Kelly is loose. 20 yard line, first and 10. Clemson at the 17. It's a gain of 23. Sims on the tackle. You talk about a great young talent. This guy is smooth, Ron. Actually, a basketball player in high school. Not highly recruited. Clemson, the first offer. But what a great call on third down. They come out of the little bunch, just hook Kelly up, and then the run after the catch for a big six foot five receiver. Mayhem out there blocking for his uh, teammate. An amazing Colorado stops them basically all night. They get back in the game, and now Clemson takes the football and drives it out. And that personal foul really changed the play calling for Clemson, don't you think? Oh, no question. They blitzed again right there, brought the inside linebackers. And that's Davis who will take it down close to the 11 yard line. Abraham Wright is there to make the play defensively, and now we're under 245 to play. But so many. Good luck things run in this game for Colorado tonight. I think they've had the benefit of some breaks. Just keep playing right now if you're Colorado's defense. Hold them to a field goal. Keep it a six-point game. Keep playing on defense. Clemson now with the second down and five. Two tight ends in the ball game. They go straight ahead, and there's Davis. Squeezes his way through a small opening. He's close to the first down at the six yard line. Henderson makes the tackle. And I tell you, Ron, this is what's impressive. A guy late in the football game, being able to protect the football. You have enough confidence in him as a true freshman and gain the tough yards. You know, so many guys coming out of high school that were scat backs, speed backs in high school. They don't come into college football and gain the tough yards in these tough situations. That's what you have to be impressed about, James Davis. You see him embracing that football? <laughs> and he did from the get go, the minute he got to the line of scrimmage, to make sure he did not give it up. We are now under one minute and 50 seconds. Seconds left to play in our ball game. 13 to 10. Clemson leading by a field goal and driving. And it'll be Davis again. Outside to the left. Three, two, one. Touchdown, Clemson. James Davis. Again, just the outside zone play. A little bit of holding, maybe, right there. But I'll tell you, the leg strength of this guy, and he learned early to reach that football out. Very close right here. But he reaches it across the plane of that goal line. But penalties run. It's bit Colorado all year, and it bites him again at the end of this game. Dean with the extra point attempt. And the ball is blocked. And a good hustle by Steven Jackson to come back and make the recovery. And for Davis, what a night. 150 yards on 28 carries and a touchdown. ESPN's Bowl doubleheader continues next with a rematch of the 1978 Garden State Bowl. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights take on the Arizona State Sun Devils, the inside bowl which is also available in high definition on ESPN HD. I tell you, Ron, this is going to be an excellent Clemson football team. I think two things. One, the kicking game. If Clemson's going to be a top 10 team next year, win those close games, they have to improve in the kicking game. And then Will Proctor, the junior quarterback who they really like. But the first thing, address the kicking game problems if you're Clemson. Well, they, I'm just sitting here going uh, through the, the numbers again as far as the underclassmen that are on this team. Uh, they lose Bennett, the big defensive end who has uh, been uh, such a factor. Also, Trey Tate, one of the defensive linemen. Uh, Ty Hill, the outstanding cover corner, but uh, the man on the other side, Coleman, is only a junior. Hamlin, the safety, redshirt freshman. Watkins, Billy, Waters, all the starters at linebacker, they're back. They're going to have about seven returners on defense. And the momentum you gain from beating Florida State, South Carolina, and now winning this bowl game. I mean, Clemson, I think, 
has a tremendous foundation set for next year. And the bottom line, like you said, a bunch of talent on this thing. Boy, they really do. But you are totally right on with the addressing the special teams and, and their play because as much of a, a bonus and a plus, these other factors are we're talking about. Special teams can kill you real quickly. And you have to be proud of Colorado, Ron. The effort this coaching staff and this football team has given tonight. But Dan Hawkins needs to go out and recruit because they are lacking speed on this football team. Quick pass right there to Sprague. And the official says he caught it and was tackled in bounds. So the clock will continue. Now the Capital One players of the game. That's pretty good, isn't it? You're going to put that on your horse trailer, the Clemson defense? Don't you have a horse trailer like? No. You don't? I, I'm a bass boat. I don't, I don't have a horse trailer. There you go. The <laughs> well, that pass right over the middle, incomplete. Boy, that's that's quite a hit that the receiver Ooh. Sprague took. And that's a Tremaine Billy, the young yeah. man we were talking about. And I think Billy is one of those players that is destined for what could be greatness. A spreader champion in high school in both the 100 meters and the 200 meters. And, folks, they play him at linebacker. And, uh, and and Billy is 6'1", 205 pounds. That's got, he, he's got safety written all over him, doesn't he? I tell you, he really does. But they do something interesting. They let him go to the ball, and then the secondary kind of plays opposite of where he goes. They just let him play with instincts. Pass over the middle, and the ball is tipped and almost intercepted. It was Fudge, Jamal Fudge, who got a hand on it. And Dwayne Coleman almost stepped in with the tip drill and made the pickoff. The thing you see on this football field tonight is that ball is thrown behind Jamal Fudge on the tip, but the speed difference, Ron, between these two football teams is so noticeable. So it's fourth down, and with uh, 59 seconds showing on the clock, the Buffaloes will go for this fourth down play. Down by nine points. Brian White steps up, drills the ball, got it complete over the middle, and he'll have the first down. That's a nice job on the pass to Sipnuski. 11 yards gained on the plays. You look at Davis. First running back this year to go over 150 against Colorado. But Tommy Bowden finishing three years in a row, Ron, winning five of his last six games. He's got some magic late in the season. Man. Yep. Got that pass away, Sipnuski again, and he's collared and tackled at the 45. And we are about to go under 40 seconds left in the ball game. That was Fudge on the tackle. I'll tell you what, Brian White can throw the football now for Colorado as we look at this late season Clemson records the last three years. And the interesting thing is he did it this year with two new coordinators, not one, but two. That ball is dropped by Patrick Williams. And Tommy Bowden. <laughs> well, it's a partial hit. Still got a series. He's still coaching over there now. When you look at Dwayne Coleman. This guy was a running back run during the season. I think in 03 he left, left Clemson in rushing. But Tommy Bowden, give him credit, going away from the spread offense, had enough courage to go hire Rob Spence, line up and run the ball more. They're an improving team. From the shotgun, third down. White steps up and it just throws a little safety valve. And that's a Hugh Charles, and he will get out of bounds and stop the clock with 11 seconds. And now here comes a late flag. In. Anthony Waters, I think, is a man who was flagged for the personal foul with the hit out of bounds. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 40, defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. So we got 11 seconds left in the ball game. Clemson 19 to 10. But the new line of scrimmage is now the 29 yard line. I know it's late, but what a different looking offense <laughs> with yeah. Brian White in the football game. I mean, well, a moment ago when he threw the safety valve, I mean, again, poise. 
You know, it's like his picture is is a lot bigger than than some other quarterbacks at his age. And that ball is tipped and knocked away, and we'll have six seconds left. Patrick Williams, the intended receiver, and Coleman got a hand on it. Not trying to make the youngster a total package just yet, but he does show some great signs as far as really adapting or being one who would adapt quickly to the position. Exactly. That's a great play by Michael Hamlin, the strong safety run, number 25. That's another freshman who made an All-American team for Clemson right there. Great camera shot right there. White rolls the pocket, throws for the end zone, and this ball is incomplete, and the clock has run out, and the Clemson Tigers will get the victory. But the Colorado Buffaloes are going to get an E for effort, and that's not just doing something to pat them on the back because of a rough close to their year. They came on in that the uh, Second half, and particularly in the fourth quarter, and made a ball game out of it. Look for Clemson Ron next year. I'm putting them in the preseason top ten. Let's go down to the sideline, Holly Rowe. Well, we've got Coach Tommy Bowden, and Coach, you guys have found some. Get in. <laughs> You found some magic late in the season to win it and end on a great streak. How were you able to do it again tonight? Well, again, defense played good. We had to finish with an offensive drive, and Charlie took us down the field like he's done so so many years. I was happy for him the way he ended, but again, uh, defense played real good. In offense, we had one drive to kind of finish it off. All right, and a quick question for Charlie. You guys, they pulled in three points, and you had to come back out in the field. What were you thinking during that last drive? Well, we had struggled a little bit in the second half. Uh, you know, weren't helping our defense out at all, but uh, they kept getting, giving us the ball back, and uh, you know, we were able to move it and get a touchdown there at the end. I said, just just a great feeling for everybody. What's it like for you? to go out with the win your last game yeah it's just an unbelievable feeling my career here has been uh, you know more than I could could have ever imagined and uh, it's just you know coach Bowden gave me a chance to come and uh, it worked out great for everybody all right Charlie Whitehurst and coach Tommy Bowden go out with the win here in Orlando all right Holly thanks so much we appreciate it our final score Clemson 19 and Colorado 10 this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports the 2005 inside bowl is coming up next First, let's join Reese Davis in our ESPN studio. Reese Davis.